Have you ever seen nitrites, sulfites, or sorbic acid listed as an ingredient in your food and thought, what the heck is going on here? But these are just three examples of the many, many ingredients that are added as food preservatives, which means it's probably a good idea to understand what are these food preservatives, why are they added, and are there any health concerns? Preservatives are ingredients added to our food with the specific job of increasing the shelf life or making sure that the food doesn't spoil when it's sitting on the grocery store shelf or sitting in your home. Now, preservatives are just one type of food additive because the term food additive is very broad. It's basically any component that becomes part of a processed food. So food additive includes preservatives, but also other ingredients like antioxidants, enzymes, colors, thickeners, and much more. But this video, we're just doing a deep dive into food preservatives. By definition, preservatives are added to food to either stop or at least slow down microbial growth and therefore spoilage that might change either the taste, the texture, or some other quality of the food. So these molecules are really added to stop bacteria, yeast, and mold from growing and trying to keep the food fresh for longer. For example, you might have noticed if you buy fresh bread from a bakery without a preservative, sitting out at room temperature, it might start to mold in three days. But if you buy bread from the grocery store, which has an added preservative, that bread could be good for two plus weeks. Now that we understand how food preservatives work, I wanna dive into some of the most common food preservatives to look at how exactly are they used and are there any related health concerns? First up is two of the most common food preservatives. This is added salt or added sugar. These two agents are ubiquitous in our processed food supply. If you're eating mostly processed food, you're going to be eating a lot of added sugar and a lot of added salt. Now, one thing I think people do get wrong or confused about is that salt and sugar is added to these foods, not because the food industry wants you addicted to salt or sugar or because we like really sugary tasting things or salty foods, which I mean, I do love both of those things. But the reason salt and sugar is used so often is because it's a very, very good preservative agent. It's not just to make something salty or sweet. Salt and sugar are used as preservatives because they affect the water availability in foods. And just like we need water to live, so do microorganisms. The availability of water in food is measured by something called water activity. And so, for example, because I'm a food scientist, I know that fresh meat has a very high water activity of 0.98, when the highest water activity you could ever have is one, so it's really up there. Now, to make sure this fresh meat doesn't spoil very quickly, I will add salt until I lower the water activity of the meat until about 0.9, because I know at this water activity, most spoilage microorganisms can no longer grow. They don't like these salty conditions, so this extends the shelf life of the food. I think you have to be living under a rock to not have heard there's very bad health effects of eating large amounts of sugar and salt. I mean, if you take salt, for instance, we've seen this lead to higher blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke, which are like the number one killers of adults, at least in the US. Sugar is really no better, but it just tends to lead to different diseases, like you're more likely to be obese or have diabetes. Another category of preservatives is acids, or I'll call them weak acids, just meaning you're not eating a strong acid like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid, which would literally burn your skin off. So these are acids naturally found in a lot of fruits, and the reason acids help to preserve food to elong the shelf life is that when acid is added to a food, they can actually diffuse into a microbial cell. They can sort of go through these little pores and into the membrane of a microorganism. And once enough acid has accumulated there, it really messes up uh, the bacteria's sort of metabolism, the biochemical pathways, until these cells just burst open. And there's a ton of different acids that we use in the food industry 
for preservation. Acetic acid, for example, is the main acid found in vinegar. And this is why vinegar is used in preserving so many different foods. Like when you pickle something and use vinegar, the active preserving agent is actually acetic acid. This explains why vinegar is a very common ingredient in things from anything pickled to mayonnaise, salad dressing, and a bunch of different condiments. Propionic acid is a particularly good mold inhibitor, so you'll see this most commonly in different bakery products and processed cheese. Sorbic acid is commonly used to inhibit both yeast and mold in food products like wine, fruit juices, some pastries, and processed cheese as well. Another category of food preservatives, these are nitrates and nitrites. Now, nitrites are always the active preserving agent, even if nitrates are what's added to food, because once in food, nitrates are always converted either by a microorganism or a different ingredient into nitrites. And you'll see this type of preservative agent typically in any type of cured meat, whether that's prosciutto, ham, bacon, or hot dogs, that type of thing. And these nitrites, they're a super useful preservative for many reasons. First, they're very good at stopping any growth of spoilage microorganisms. But beyond that, they actually stop a pathogenic bacteria, a bacteria that could make us sick, called Clostridium botulinum, from making a toxin. And it's when we eat this toxin that we can get very, very sick. And without nitrites, we also wouldn't get that like characteristic pink color and flavor that we associate with different meats like bacon and ham. And I just gotta stop to do a little rant about celery salt and celery powder because I see foods like bacon being advertised as no nitrites added and instead they add celery salt or celery powder. Why do they do this? Because celery salt is mostly nitrites so it still has added nitrites. It's just in that celery ingredient. So it's the same thing as basically just directly adding a pure nitrite or nitrate. So don't be fooled by this. It's really a marketing gimmick and I don't like it because I think it confuses people when really it's adding the same ingredient, the nitrites. That was That is the purpose of celery salt or celery powder. It comes to health concerns. If you eat an excessive amount of nitrites, there are several different concerns. Probably the number one concern is the formation of a molecule called nitrosamines in your body. And nitrosamines are made when the nitrites react with protein under acidic conditions, which can happen in your stomach. And there is evidence that there's a link between nitrosamines and the development of cancer in your stomach and esophagus. So you definitely want to watch out how much nitrites are you eating. It's also been seen that lesser amounts of nitrites, they actually have this affinity. They want to bind to the hemoglobin in our red blood cells, which unfortunately will lower the amount of oxygen delivered to our muscles. So this is another issue with eating too much nitrites. All right, moving on to sulfur containing agents. So these are preservative agents like sulfur dioxide and sulfites you'll see most commonly. And again, these compounds are very good antimicrobials. So they work by inhibiting the growth of bacteria, yeast, and molds. And similar to acids, these compounds are able to cross into the microorganism. So enter the microorganism and in there they mess up the normal functioning of these cells. So that's how they act as a food preservative. Winemakers particularly have this long history of using sulfites because typically in wine fermentation you want only one specific type of yeast to grow that is characteristic to that variety of wine. So by adding sulfites it's actually an easy way for the winemaker to control sort of these wild bacteria, yeast, and molds that would throw the flavor of the wine off. It's a, it's a preservative used to control the fermentation of wine. These sulfur-containing compounds are also very commonly used in different dried fruits. And this is not only because it's an antimicrobial, but more because it actually prevents any browning, whether that's from an enzyme or, or Maillard browning. If you've ever eaten golden raisins, like those yellowish colored raisins, 
They stay that color because they have usually sulfur dioxide added, which stops the raisins from turning into that deep brown. It's what keeps them golden. Let's talk about the health effects of sulfites. So we know our body normally produces about 1,000 milligrams of sulfites each and every day, and that these sulfites are excreted through our urine with no problem. There is, however, about 1% of the U.S. population that is sensitive to sulfites. And if you're sensitive to sulfites whenever you eat them, you experience symptoms as if you have asthma, a short, shortness of breath, it's hard to breathe, or it can even lead to anaphylactic shock, so kind of like a food allergy. And if you go to your doctor, they can actually test you if you're sensitive to sulfites. So if you've experienced any of these symptoms, I would definitely go ask your doctor. If you enjoyed this video, next I would check out my deep dive into bioengineered foods.